Good evening and welcome to our lesson tonight. We are so happy that you're joining us and it's been great seeing everyone start to come back to church on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday nights. We are continuing to have two services, one at 9 and one at 11, and we haven't started back Sunday school yet. Nursery is available for both our 9 and 11 o'clock services on Sundays. During our, our 11 o'clock service, we will have three to kindergarten in our children's church, first through fifth grade in the fellowship hall. Kids can start checking in at 1045 on Sunday morning. And we've also started back our Wednesday night classes of nursery, three to kindergarten, and first to fifth grade. And check-in starts at 645. We are continuing to clean and sanitize our rooms and the toys. So if you're not ready to come back, that's okay. They are more than welcome to continue to worship with you in the sanctuary. Yes. We want to say thank you guys for bringing in your BGMC money today. Our bucket is probably halfway full, would you say? Yeah. yeah. So continue to save that um, money in your buddy barrel. Um, and I'm excited to see what God is doing through you and through our missionaries with your giving. We're also continuing our Sunday morning and Wednesday night videos. For those who are not yet ready to come back or cannot make it to church on Sundays. Yes. We'll probably start showing these at five, you think? Is that what our... Yes. So this video will probably start showing in the evenings. That way, um, you're not... When you're getting ready for church in the morning, um, you have time to go back and watch it mm -hmm. in the evening. We had 11 kids last 11. week do our power verse and we were so excited about that we love seeing you guys memorize god's word posting it on our facebook page and every all the adults i think love to see it as well and our two winners this week since we had 10 or we had 11 kids we chose two winners and our winners were sawyer and camden this week so congratulations to them um on winning if you want to get in on trying to uh, be the winner for the week. All you have to do, memorize our power verse, have your parent post it to our Facebook page or send us a message of you saying it and your name will be entered in and you've got to get those videos in by Tuesday at 6.30. Speaking of the power verse, let's check in with our king to see what this week's power verse is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's me, boys and girls. The King. That's right. You know why I'm here? I'm here to teach you today's power verse. That's right. So today's power verse says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a good power verse, if I do say so myself. And I did say it myself. Well, I want to have some help now, and I think it's time for the boys to say it with me. So I'll tell you what I want. I want my boys to stand up with the king here. Stand up and get ready to shake, rattle, and roll. Are you ready, boys? Say the power verse with me, the king. One, two, three. Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 Oh, beautiful job, boys. Beautiful job. I'll tell you what, I want you to sit down, and I'll tell you who I want you to come up now. I want the girls. Girls, stand up with the king here, would you? And would you say the power verse even louder than the boys? Here we go. On the count of three with the king. One, two, Three. Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 Great job, great job. You may have a seat. I tell you this right now. Sit down, sit down. Listen, when I make mistakes, I just love the fact that God's always right there, ready to welcome me back home. 
Listen, I don't have to go and beg and plead and, and do all these things to earn his favor. Oh, no. I just go to the King of Kings and I repent of my sins and then I don't ever go back to that stuff again. That's why he welcomes me back and he's going to help me every time I mess up. Isn't that good? Well, I'll tell you what I want. I want boys and girls, everybody, girls, boys, the whole works. Stand up with old Elvis and I want you to do it with the King. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have done a great job with the king and you've learned the power verse, but I gotta let you go. So until next time, you remember, I'm the king and I serve the king of kings. Elvis has left the building. The King always does a great job with our power verse. Mm -hmm. Let's say our power verse one more time. Say it with me, Cody. Okay. Now, now repent, repent of your, your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 319. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> our big idea for the lesson today is, say it with me. Sorry. One more. There we go. Even when I fail, God, God will, will take, take me back. back. Let's do it again. Okay. One, two, three. Even, Even when, when I, I fail, God, God will, will take, take me back. back. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We all have failed, right? Mm -hmm. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done or maybe aren't proud of, but we always know that even if we fail, God will take us back. And... That's the title of our lesson today. Welcome back. So our lesson today is found in John chapter 21. Yes. And it's the whole chapter. It's pretty much the whole chapter. So no verses. Go back and read John 21 and you will get our lesson today. Well, today, you guys, is our last lesson on Average Pete. Oh, it's okay, Cody. We're going to finish it up talking about him, and he was a disciple. Um, he was just an average, ordinary person like you and me, but God used him to do some amazing things for him. Yeah. And in our last lesson, Peter made a huge mistake. He ignored several of the warning signs, and he ended up making a really big mistake. And not just once, but... Yes, three times he made that mistake. And he, he chopped an arrow. He did. Yeah. He denied Jesus. Yes, he chopped an arrow. And then an what did Jesus do? Oh, yeah. It's on. Yeah. It's back. That was pretty awesome. It is. Well, he denied Jesus, and um, he did it three times. He denied him three times. Mm -hmm. And at that very moment... After when he denied him, and the rooster crowed. At that very moment, he looks over, and who is looking at him? Jesus. Jesus is looking at him. Peter, he must have felt terrible. He must have felt like a failure. He had blown it. He was supposed to be a disciple who would tell everyone about Jesus, but instead, he was a failure who denied that he even knew who Jesus was. Has anyone ever? got that look. That's what I was doing to Miss Sarah. Yeah. They got that look from their mom or dad or their grandparents. Or a teacher. That they were in trouble. Like, yeah, they were they caught. Were, like they were caught and they were disappointed like yes, this. They got caught. I think Cody has a story of when he got caught at school doing something and he saw the teacher. You want to tell that story? Yeah. Okay. So I was in the fifth grade and um, this girl had written in my yearbook some not nice things and so I did something I went to her yearbook and I didn't write anything bad I just colored in some eyes they were my own eyes in her yearbook so I didn't think she would care <laughs> so um, 
they, I told the principal, and or I told my teacher, and I told the principal. Well, they said, well, what did you do to hers? And I said, well, I didn't do anything. Mm. And really, to be, to be honest, I thought, well, I didn't really do anything. I just, I did. So they uh, said that I lied. Mm -hmm. Because I did, they she made she had to go get her yearbook and brought it to school, and they found out that hers was in fact written in as well. And I had to go to the principal's office, and it was like five days before school was out, mm -hmm. so I had to go to the principal's office and just write down definitions. Missed all the fun times. I did all the fun games. You know that wasn't the story I thought you were going to tell. I know, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, I it still okay. lied. You still lied. You've got a lot of stories. Not that you were a bad kid, but I think you've got a lot of stories. That's probably so. the only two that I have on that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. That one. Yeah. I don't That's know. That's for another lesson. Okay. We'll save it for later. Well, just like Pastor Cody has failed, we've all failed. Peter failed whenever he denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he looked over and he saw Jesus looking at him. Well... Like I said, Peter's not the only one that's ever felt that way. He's not the only person who has ever failed. Most likely you have failed in some way also. Yeah. I think we all have. Well, brings us to our first point. When I fail, or nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes. And we do. Just like I just made a mistake right there trying to That read. was one of our last... It was. Lesson. It was a lesson. I had to get me through. That's right. Well, but nobody's perfect. Right. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, in Romans 3, 23, it says that we all have sinned. We are all capable of making mistakes and falling into temptation. Many times when we do fail, we begin to believe that God's plan for our lives is over. We've messed up too much. He says, I'm done. No more. Well, thankfully, that's not the case. We believe that God, we believe that God had a plan for our lives, and when we fail. So it's not thankfully, but. What? I'm thankful he doesn't give up on us. Oh, right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that's what I mean. Yeah. I'm thankful when we do fail, he doesn't yeah. give up on us. Correct. He Sorry. always, he's still there. Right. We just have, we, that in a minute, we're going to. Say what we got to do mm -hmm. with that. Um, when we fail, God's plan isn't over. Yeah, It's still there, and he still has a plan for our lives. And I'm so thankful for that. We may feel like we're a failure, but there's one thing we've got to do. When we have all sin when we've sinned, we should do what Peter did. And what did Peter do? He went to Jesus. He went to Jesus. When I fail, I must come to Jesus. After Jesus was arrested, crucified, and buried, God raised him from the dead. One day, while Peter and some of the disciples were out fishing, they noticed a man walking along the shore. The man called out to them from the shore. When Peter realized that it was Jesus, there he couldn't wait to row in his boat, and he did it. You know what he did? He couldn't wait to see him. He jumped. Yep. He jumped out of the boat into the water, and he swam all the way to the shore. I'm not sure how far out they were, but I guess close enough to realize it was Jesus. Yeah. And so he, he got a good swim in, and that is what we need to do when we fail. We don't need to run away from God. We need to turn to God. We need to go to him and confess our sins. He already knows what we did. I think sometimes people think they can hide things mm -hmm. or maybe they do something and they know nobody saw them. So they think, oh, well, nobody saw me. So it's going to be okay. But God knows. Yeah. He saw what happened. And we've got to turn to him and we've got to confess and we've got to ask for forgiveness. Right. Right. So when they reached the shore, when they all reached the shore, mm -hmm. got tongue tied. Jesus had a fire started, and while they were sitting around that fire, Jesus said, "Bring 
some of the fish that you have just caught. Mm -hmm. Let's have breakfast. Yes. So they ate together in the fire, Jesus and his disciples. Do you know how many fish they caught that day? Uh, Do you remember? Was it it's 40? in the Bible. No. It's in this story if you read John was it, 21. Was it 13? Because there was 13 of them? No. I'm just kidding. So when... <laughs> When Jesus was on the shore and he hollered out to the boat and he said, got any fish? And they said, no. He said, throw it on the right side of the boat. Mm -hmm. So they did. And their net was full of fish. It was almost breaking. Yes. And there was 153 fish in there. Huh. And so they, they also ate some of those, that fish too. Okay. That they caught. So when they got to the shore, he said, let's have breakfast. And they were sitting around with the disciples, just like they had done before. Mm -hmm. So when they were eating, this is what Peter, or Jesus said to Peter. Peter, I have a question. Do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. This meant, lead my people. Yes. Then Jesus asked again, do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, you know I love, Lord, I love you. Jesus said, Then feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Jesus asked a third time, Do you love me? This time, Peter got his feelings hurt. He couldn't believe Jesus asked him a third time. He said, Jesus, you know that I love you. You know everything. Jesus said, then go feed my sheep. Why did Jesus ask the same question three times? I don't think the number was a coincidence. No. I think Jesus was giving Peter three chances mm -hmm. to answer the question the right way. Yes. Peter denied Jesus. Three times. Three times. Now, three times... Jesus let Peter declare his love for him, for Jesus. Then Jesus said something amazing to Peter. He began to tell him what he was going to do and all the amazing things for him, including that Peter would die for him. Can you believe that someone that went from denouncing the name of Jesus, not knowing him, mm -hmm. to be willing to die for him. That's a huge turnaround. Yeah. Jesus was telling this to Peter to let him know that even though he had failed, God still had a plan for him and that it was intact. What does this teach us, Miss Sarah? <laughs> that failure is not for us. No, it's not. Um, Jesus didn't hold Peter's failure against him. Mm -mm. Even though Peter failed big time, God still had an amazing plan for Peter. Yes. It's the same with us. So even though we may have failed and we thought that God's plan was not in our for our lives was over. The truth is that God's plan is not over. His plan is still in place. Yes. When we fail, we must come to Jesus and ask for his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Then we get right back into doing what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Just like Peter, we can get back on track and do big things for God. Failure isn't forever. He went from Guys, I mean, he was one of the big leaders and the reason why Jesus died. So, wouldn't you think Jesus might be a little mad? He might, but but he wasn't. wasn't. So he the, knew he loved. He him. knew he loved. He loved Peter so much that he, he let him, him. He died for him. So, next time we get mad because someone stole our chair or mm -hmm. they got the front seat instead of the back seat. Or they ate the last piece of candy. I think there's bigger things that we could be angry about and still 
not have anything like what Jesus had for Peter. Yeah. You know? Peter, Peter did amazing things. Peter did amazing things for God. And you can do amazing things as well for God. No matter what you've done or you might think you've you blew it big time. You haven't. If we can do what Peter did, and we've got to come back to Jesus yeah. and not try to run from it. Let's pray together before we move on in our story today. Lord, I thank you for today and all that you are doing. I thank you that you are a God who forgives. We all make mistakes and do things we shouldn't, but we can always come to you and ask for forgiveness and direction. I pray for those who may have a hard time receiving forgiveness. I pray that they will allow you to put them back on the right track. Thank you, God, for the plan you have for each and every one of us. I pray that each and every person listening today knows that they can do big things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to move on to... Brain drain. brain drain. Let's see what brain drain is today. There's our little brain drain man. Our first question today is, what is today's big idea? Number two, what was Peter doing when Jesus appeared on the beach? Hmm, he went back to doing what he knew, right? Before he became a disciple. Number three, when he saw it was Jesus on the shore, what did Peter do? According to our lesson today, number four, nobody's blank. We all make mistakes. Yes. Number five, according to our lesson today, when I fail, I must come to who? Who should we come to? Number six, according to our lesson today, failure isn't what? Number seven, will Jesus forgive us of our failures if we ask him? Number eight, where was our Bible story found today? Mm -hmm. And our last one today, we only had nine. Number nine, where was our power verse found today? Okay, are you ready for this? It's our last Skittles wrap up. Yeah. Okay, you I'm guys so hold on, hold on to your seats. Here comes Skittles. Oh yeah, what's up? It's Skittles and the fishy and Peter, and we're gonna wrap it up. I hope you're ready. Yeah. Peter was sad because he did wrong. He did not even knew Jesus all night long. A few days later, he was fishing on a boat. Jesus showed up. Peter jumped out the boat. He swam to Jesus. He hugged him real tight. He confessed his love and made things right. When we do wrong and we act all whack, God will always take us back. That's right. God loves us. He's not trying to get all mad at us and tell us we need to go away. Oh, no. God says, I'll take you back any old day. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my Savior. Skittles out, baby. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. It was so great to be with you guys for your evening uh, service. Mm -hmm. And we hope you guys have a great week and enjoy your holiday.